So my name is Rich Meganson. I'm the tech lead for the Linux System Roles project. And I'm here today to talk to you about how you can use Linux System Roles to manage standard operating environments. <clears throat> so the problem I want to talk about is, how do you manage a lab which has a diverse mix of machines and frequently changing requirements? So I need to manage and enforce a standard operating environment across all of my machines. I need to be able to keep up to date with security requirements and industry best practices. And I need to automate as much of this as possible. In case you're not familiar with Ansible, it's a tool for automating software management using an SSH based protocol and simple YAML file configuration. It has a large library of support for many different software and devices and supports a wide variety of platforms. Linux system roles are a set of Ansible roles used to manage operating system components. They provide a consistent interface to those components on different platforms and OS versions. They abstract the configuration interface from the implementation. So for example, the network role can be used to manage network settings for both the init scripts method and the network manager method. Uh, similarly for the time sync role, it can be used to manage both NTP and crony. In most cases, the maintainers of the packages in Fedora and RHEL, and in some cases, the upstream maintainers of those components also contribute to the roles. So that way we can keep the role in sync with the actual component that it's being used for. Some of our roles are supported on RHEL 6 and, and RHEL 7. Uh, some are not. For example, the session recording or T-log role is new for RHEL 8. So we don't have support for that on RHEL 6 or 7. Um, also, all roles work with a RHEL 7 controller. So that would be an older version of Ansible, like Ansible 2.8 and Jinja 2.7. So this is important if you have a dedicated con Ansible controller node that you can't easily upgrade. You can use that node to deploy all of our roles. We also have a collection in Ansible Galaxy. It's under the Fedora namespace. It's called Linux underscore system underscore roles. So by now we have quite a few roles that we have developed. We have some ones that have just come out such as SSH, VPN, SSHD, and crypto policies. In addition to these new roles, uh, some of the existing roles have several new features, such as the storage role now supports Lux encryption. The network role supports wireless and DNS options. And there's, and there's many, many more. And then uh, also have listed some of the new roles we have planned in the pipeline. So these are the components used for managing my standard operating environment. Ansible provides the automation framework System Roles allows us to provide a consistent software management interface for a wide variety of system components across a diverse mix of platforms. The use of relatively static playbooks provides consistency in how the settings are applied. So once I get my playbooks debugged and working the way I want, and I don't have to change them, then I don't have to worry about testing them. You know, I don't have to change them and then worry if I broke something. Uh, if I don't change it, I don't have to test it. So the use of the dynamic inventory allows me to add, remove hosts, update host groups, and keep my settings up to date. And then if I keep my inventory and playbooks in Git, I can use a GitOps style workflow to redeploy when something has changed. So here we have an example of a, an Ansible play <clears throat> that applies several roles to all machines. This is my baseline common SOE configuration. So I have common settings that I want to apply to all my machines, kernel settings, security settings, time sync, kernel dump, and many more. In addition, I'm using the T-log role to record all login sessions to my lab machines. And I'm using the VPN role to ensure that all traffic is encrypted between my lab machines in case some services cannot use TLS. And then I'm using the network role to create a bonded link for a management plane or a back plane. <clears throat> One thing to notice here is that order matters. So we must do these lower level settings such as kernel settings and crypto policies first. And in some cases, they may actually have to reboot the machines in order to be applied before I can move on to what I'll call the higher level settings. So here's an example of my main inventory file. So this defines the hosts, the host groups, 
in some host and group specific settings. So for example, settings that would need a host name or a list of host names. But all of my other config is in group vars files. Uh, this inventory file, I might keep in Git, but I can also dynamically generate it. So this is my all.yaml. This is where I keep my common baseline configuration that I apply to all nodes, my kernel settings, crypto settings, time sync, SSHD, and, and lots more. So I can then add or override these with group specific settings in group vars files. So typically I would keep this in Git and I would probably have to update this frequency frequently as uh, new policies and new requirements require. So <clears throat> some of my machines are clients and some of my machines are servers. So these are plays that I would use for dedicated clients. The host notation means all hosts that are not in the logging servers group are my logging clients, for example. So I don't have a separate group var inventory files for these. These settings are also in the all.yaml file. So here are some plays that do the additional management required for nodes in the dedicated server groups. So note that some system roles can manage both client and server hosts, such as the logging and metrics roles, but some roles are dedicated to one or the other. So we have a separate NBDE client and separate NBDE server role. And so here are the settings which are applied to the nodes in the logging servers group. This is in the logging servers.yaml group virus file. This configures the logging servers to ingest logs from the test lab machines, and it stores those logs in local directories, one directory per host. So I could also use this to forward to some external log aggregator if I wanted. And then the same applies to metric servers and NFS servers. I have a group virus files for each one of those. All right, it's time for the demo. So I have a pre-recorded demo. Um, it's just going to use the collection. So I'm using our Linux system roles collection. I'm also using the Oasis roles collection from Ansible Galaxy. I'm going to deploy three hosts, uh, one of which is a server and two of which are clients. Um, and I'm going to apply my, my SOE to all of them. And then I'm going to log in and check and make sure my settings are working. Setting up a standard operating environment using Ansible and Linux system roles. So let's take a look at the, this is the playbook that I'm using. Um, at the top are the common roles that I use for doing the baseline setup. After that, I have um, a play to create and deploy some certificates that I use in the demo. After that, I have some server and client specific setup. So I have a setup for NFS servers and logging servers, and metric servers, and setup for logging metrics and NFS clients. So now let's take a look at the inventory. So I have a main file, inventory.yaml. This is where I define my hosts, my list of hosts, any global variables, that depend on host settings. And this is where I define my groups. So I have logging servers. I have a group of metric servers. And I have do have one variable defined here, which is my the metrics client hosts. And then I have my NFS servers. And I have my storage data volume that I use on my NFS servers. So now let's take a look at the group bars. The first one, all.yaml. This is the configuration for all hosts. This is my baseline configuration where I define kernel settings, crypto policy, firewall, time sync. This is also where I have my client settings too. So you can see I have NFS client settings in here, uh, have my logging client settings in here. As you can see, uh, I'm using the RELP client. 
And I have my network connections defined at the bottom of here as well. So let's take a look at the logging servers. So this is where I have my settings for my logging servers. I'm using the RELP server. So I ingest logs from coming in from all the clients, and then I write them out to a log directory where there's one directory per logging client. Here's my metric server, but I don't have any metric server settings yet. They're all, they're all defined in the main inventory. And then my NFS server, so I have my storage volumes that I'm using on my NFS servers. <clears throat> and my other NFS server settings. Playbook's done. So let's check and see if our settings were applied. So let's take one of the servers. Well, the logging metrics and NFS server are all the same host here. So let's just find the IP address of that host and let's log into that server. So the first thing you see is that session recording is working. The session is being recorded. So let's check some various things here. So let's check and see if our NFS exports are working. So export FS reports the data volume is being shared. Let's check our exports file. That looks correct. There's the data volume. Now let's check our VPN IPsec traffic. So as you can see, we have a lot of traffic going to and from our client machines. Both tunnels are up, both tunnels are reporting lots of traffic. Now let's check our log aggregation to see if our log aggregation is working. So in this directory, we have subdirectories for each host client that we're collecting logs from. So let's take a look and see what the logs look like from one of our clients. As you can see, there are a lot of logs here from our client. This is broken down by I believe the system D service, but you can break them down however you'd like. Now let's check and see if our metric server settings were applied. We should have a subdirectory here for each one of the clients. And there they are. So let's create a file in the NFS shared directory. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll log into a client and we'll see if we can see that file from the client. So there it is. So we'll log out here. Let's look at our inventory again. And we'll just pick one of the client machines. It doesn't really matter. So we'll just pick this one. Okay, let's log into this machine. Our session here is also being recorded. So let's look at our NFS share and there's the file that we created on the server. We can read it on the client. Let's check DF output. We can see that the slash data directory is being NFS mounted from our server machine. Let's check the IPsec 
in a, a VPN traffic here. So we can see that uh, to the server machine, there is a lot of traffic in and out. Invites and out bytes. But for the client machine, there's no traffic. So we're not doing anything directly with the client machine, only with the server machine, where we have a lot of traffic there. Now let's create a file in the NFS share. See if we can create a file there and then see if we can see it on the NFS server. Okay, so there it is. All right. Okay, let's log back into the server machine. And there's the file that we created. Now let's see if our network settings were applied. So we, we're going to create a, uh, a bridge uh, and a bond of two Ethernet devices and a, a VLAN. So there they are. There's our two Ethernet devices. There's our bridge and our bond. OK. Demo is done. So here's some links to uh, documentation and references. So there's our landing page. There's our Ansible Galaxy page for our collection. Um, and there's some other information. And I'll have the links to this demo posted pretty soon with the other links to the other demos. <clears throat> Please provide us feedback. We'd love to hear what you have to say. There's a link to our IRC, our email. You can file issues at that link on our GitHub landing page. Or you can file issues and pull requests. Um, each role has an individual repo under our GitHub organization. You can file issues there as well. And let us know. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Richard, for your talk. Thank you. We have some questions here, so if you could please go to them. Okay. Sure. That's under Q&A. Oh, okay. Do you remember how much time it took for the playbook and the demo to execute? I think it takes about, uh, I want to say about 10 minutes, give or take. Um, let's see. Is the demo session code available on GitHub? Uh, yes, it's available under uh, RichM on uh, GitHub, under uh, my RichM user account. It's called uh, DevCom 2021. Um, <clears throat> I need to clean it up a little bit and then I'll publish it under uh, uh, the Linux system roles landing page somewhere where we have our other demos. <clears throat>